Dr. Dorothy Beansley is a researcher at the Ontario Veterinary College who has been researching heaves in horses. Not long after the 2019 Havemeyer workshop on equine asthma, Dr. Beansley contributed to quite a large collaborative research paper on the current understanding and the future directions of equine asthma research. I'm sure the air was thick with uh, ideas with so many researchers coming to the Havemeyer workshop. How important are opportunities like this one to advancing the studies on equine asthma? They are absolutely essential. It's a wonderful opportunity to get together with everybody in the world who works on this particular disease. There were uh, microbiologists there, there were clinicians there, there were a few pathologists there. And um, so it's a really wonderful opportunity. It's not actually a large group, like there were maybe 50 people. And um, the people who work on, on equine respiratory disease, predominantly asthma, came with a few of their trainees and exchanged information in a very collegial manner. And uh, so it's a really wonderful opportunity and we're very grateful to the Havemeyer Foundation for funding this. And how has your research benefited from attending the Havemeyer event? It's a great opportunity to bounce off our own findings against those of other experts. There are really a lot of experts in there. And so, for example, there are questions about, you know, how does uh, early onset uh, inflammatory airway disease, which is now also called mild asthma, um, how does that relate to severe equine asthma that we tend to see in older horses? How does uh, pasture-associated asthma relate to stabling-associated asthma, which is what Pasture associated asthma is what our colleagues in the uh, hot, humid climates see, and we, we are pretty certain that it is related to inhalation of fungal spores of pasture. While in our scenario, we are confident that uh, severe equine asthma in the northern hemisphere is due to inhalation of fungal spores combined with bacterial components and probably dust. Can you briefly describe your research project and contribution to the collaborative paper? I have worked on, on equine asthma for quite a few years now, and we're really interested mainly in the host response. And so we have looked at the contribution of certain elements of the epithelium in the lung to the response of recurrent challenges. And uh, we know that challenges are what happens to horses. They need to get recurrently exposed to dusty barn air in order to eventually manifest with severe equine asthma. But, you know, we're, we're looking at by the time a horse presents to a veterinarian with severe equine asthma, that disease has probably existed, has evolved over many years. And so we're looking at it at a really at an end stage or nearly end stage. And the goal overall ought to be to identify the condition earlier. And so we've characterized a number of events that characterize the end stage of the disease. And by the time when we have an older horse with severe equine asthma and we've looked at the epithelium by taking biopsies and looking at it in a global sense by assessing all the genes that are in the epithelium that are expressed in the epithelium or individual proteins, we, we see an epithelium and we need to think of the epithelium as a cov the covering of the inside of the lung. It starts at the nose and then it goes through the nasopharynx into the trachea, the large bronchi, smaller bronchi and the bronchioles. And they all are basically the barrier between the inside and the outside. So it's a barrier between the inhaled air and of how the host responds with inflammation or immunity. And the epithelium at the terminal stage when we see equine asthma has impaired repair ability, impaired mitotic ability. It produces a lot of mediators that further inflammation. It produces mediators that cause airway remodeling and fibrosis, smooth muscle hyperplasia. So at the at this stage, when we look at the airway epithelium, it has the signs of being diseased and being in, unable to repair. But I expect that uh, it would be more informative to with regard to identifying what can be reversed if we were to look earlier. What role does next generation sequencing play in your research? So next generation sequencing, which is abbreviated as NGS oftentimes, um, globally assesses all the genes that are 
transcribed in a sample. And so we did a fairly large study um, in 2000 and oh, like maybe four or five years ago, six years ago, whereby we collected biopsies from horses with asthma and asthma before and after they had been exposed to dusty air. And then we globally assessed um, all the genes that I expressed in there with next generation sequencing. And I had a very gifted graduate student, Laurence Tessier, who did a PhD with me, and she, she did really the bioinformatic analysis. She identified genes that were differentially expressed that characterized asthmatic horses and non-asthmatic horses or distinguished asthmatic from non-asthmatic horses. She looked at variants within these genes. So for example, variants are defined as individual base pair changes that are occur over a small region. And so these kind of variants are throughout the genome that distinguishes one individual from another individual. And we also looked at do horses with asthma have certain signature variants that might indicate a susceptibility to asthma. For example, you know, we would love to know if you were to take a thousand horses and expose them to dusty barn air, how many of them will develop asthma and in what time frame? So she looked at this, we did have some significant changes of certain variants that characterized horses with asthma and, and were different from those that don't have asthma, but the investigation is not sufficient to really identify a gene signature that would be broad, broadly applicable to identify increased risk. Can you explain the connection between certain altered protein expressions and horses with heaves? When we look at what you call heaves, which is severe equine asthma, we're looking at the, the, the terminal stages of the disease. And at that point, horses um, lack certain anti-inflammatory proteins, they, such as um, um, Claracel secretory protein is the old, older name for it. It's abbreviated as CCSP now, and um, uh, which stands for club cell secretory protein. That's a key anti-inflammatory protein and affected older animals are not producing enough of that. But that is just one particular protein. They also lack, as I said, the ability to regenerate. They lack the ability to have appropriate signals for repair cytokines. Cytokines are small molecules that mediate cell and especially inflammatory cell activity. And uh, the older asthmatic horses don't pr produce the right cytokines anymore. They do not have the ability to slide cells. So individual epithelial cells, as they are injured during repeat bouts of inflammation, the repair process involves recruitment of undifferentiated epithelial cells allowing them to differentiate, putting them in the right place, which is different from, in, it's different in the bronchi versus in the bronchioles. So it's a very complex cascade and many of those proteins are not functioning properly at that stage. You did mention that a lot of the horses that you notice with equine asthma, they're come to more in an end stage, but are there predictors of equine asthma? No, we don't have good predictors. We think that um, bouts of inflammatory airway disease at a younger age predispose horses to develop asthma in later age, but we don't have solid data to support that contention at this point, which is unfortunate. We would really should be following a large set of horses over their lifespan. And um, that's, I'm not aware of anyone doing that at this point, but that might be very informative. Can you take us through the scoping procedure briefly? Prior to the bronchoalveolar lavage, the horse is scoped and it means passing an, a long endoscope, which is a basically a long, um, a, lo a long tube that has a light at the end and is connected to, in our case, we're fortunate that we have a monitor and we can record what we see. So that scope is passed through the nostril, into the nares, into the trachea, and then um, into bronchi, either right or left. And um, the typical scope we use in the scope is about two meters long and has a diameter of about half a centimeter to one centimeter. And um, we can reach usually the fifth generation of bronchus and we can assess what the mucosa looks like on the way down and uh, how, how many secretions there are. 
and um, is there any blood? Is there purulent material? Is there excess mucus? Is the airway narrow or not? So these are all informative in regard to what the health of the respiratory tract is. Now you've also provided us with two great images uh, of a from a scope from an asthmatic and non-asthmatic course. Can you just take us through what we're looking at here? If we were to compare the diameter of the bronchus, so we're in a bronchus where those images are taken, and um, the bronchus diameter in a horse with an asthmatic condition is narrow, especially if it's an active asthmatic condition, it narrows. And that has a huge amount of effect on how easy it is to pass air in and out of the lung. And so that is the the internal hallmark of an asthmatic condition. And externally, a person looking at a horse with heaves, they all know that the horse recruits the abdominal muscles in order to exhale air. And so that's the heave line that results in the heave line. The horses with severe asthma are not able to easily move air out of the lung, but they have to really push and recruit their abdominal muscles. And so a reduction in the diameter of the airway has a huge effect on the ability to pass air in and out of the lung. The secretions are a secondary sign that reflects inflammation. The diseased or irritated epithelium produces excess mucus. There are neutrophils in the very lower airways in the bronchioles and in the alveoli, and they can they contribute to the inflammatory component and the secretions. What are the potential practical applications of your research for the horse owner? I think the main uh, message to horse owners is that diagnose it early and treat aggressively. And uh, so do not wait until your horse is persistently coughing or has recurrent bouts of cough. At the first sign of a cough or of more than one cough, do have your horse investigated. And uh, the diagnostic test is a bronchoalveolar lavage. Many horse owners, uh, many horse veterinarians in practice will do that in the field and then submit it to a laboratory. And uh, that is the best test to diagnose asthma. And if the diagnosis has been established, then the horse should be treated with management, first of all. You have to get them out of the dusty barn air and get them into fresh air. And that's not easily done. And the air quality in barns is highly variable. And we appreciate that this is difficult. You know, it's hard in the, in the old bank barns where many horses live. It's really hard to have good quality air in there. And if we want to ride our horses in the winter, then we don't want them to get a really big heavy coat because they sweat a lot. But fresh air is essential for in order to try and reverse the, um, the, the development of heaves. And uh, so that's environmental management and treatment also inhaled uh, corticosteroids is really important. It will get them over a bout of inflammation and it might reduce their coughing in the short term, but environmental improvement is what's needed in order to really get rid of or, or really reduce the inflammation. Thank you, Dr. Beansley, for giving us a glimpse into your research. In closing, is there anything you'd like to emphasize, sum up, or glance into the future of equine asthma research? Well, the long-term future is really to try and diagnose it confidently more early on, and uh, that's where we'd like to be. Um, the treatment armamentarium that's available for treating people with asthma and also with horses is still limited. It consists of bronchodilation and anti-inflammatory medications such as glucocorticoids. That's not a big armamentarium and uh, we that that's all we have. So we need to focus on the environmental improvement.